All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exhaust Sports Auto. My name is Kevin, and this is a very, very special car. Uh, it's special to me, very special to me, because growing up, this was, in fact, my dream car in high school. I remember always looking at this thing. I was addicted to this car. That is the 2013 BMW M6 Coupe slash Grand Coupe. I mean, the one I'm driving right now is the Coupe, but this came out and then the Grand Coupe came out. I was just in awe of these vehicles. These were my absolute most favorite, best looking cars. Even till this day, actually, with all the crap that's come out, this is actually still the best looking BMW, in my personal opinion. I mean, leave your thoughts down in the comment section below what you think is the best looking BMW or whatever, but this just does it for me, man. Coupe, Grand Coupe, I don't care, man. This is just the one. So who do we have to thank for this opportunity? It is none other than Carry Imports. So all their information is going to be down in the description box below. But the main reason why I come here is because of their warranty. So if you're interested in purchasing this car, please don't do it without getting a warranty. This particular model, it's got about 85,000 miles on it now. It's about seven years old, going on to eight years old. So... I would not touch this thing without a warranty. But let me tell you something, there is absolutely nothing wrong with this car. Obviously the dealership's gonna work on it and all that, but I'm just saying there's nothing strange going on with it, nothing stupid, no weird check engine lights. And actually this interior, as we're about to see in the uh, interior segment, has aged extremely well. But enough talking, let's just get this bad boy out on the road because that's what matters most, right? This is an extraordinary vehicle. In terms of performance, this thing is nutty, even till this day. I mean, 560 horsepower and 500 pounds of torque coming from this 4.4 liter twin turbo V8, which they put in pretty much everything. Now all the performance BMWs get this engine. But what they don't get is this seven speed dual clutch transmission. I believe that was kind of bespoke to this model year and this generation, and then that kind of went away. Let's see, let's bust this corner. Trash control light on, so neutered that little acceleration run there you know there's obviously m1 and m2 mode and all that good stuff however i kind of have it in like the comfort mode right now and i'm going to change that in a little bit I have the m2 set to like all the performance crap but anyway yeah this car this was a i think when it first came out though not a lot of people liked it because they liked the original m6 for its v10 not so much its looks although i like the way it looked i did a 650i check out that video's 08 or whatever yeah, that V10, I'm sure it was a screamer. I'm sure it was epic to drive. However, yes, this is still a V8, which is good, but you know, it doesn't sound like a whole lot. It's got the fake, uh, the engine noise that's being pumped in through the speaker, of course. Speaking of the speakers, it's uh, banging all of a sudden, which I'll get to in a bit, but anyway. Yeah, it doesn't sound super crazy, of course. I think that was like the biggest gripe, but dude, I just love the way this car looked. That was the biggest highlight for me with this thing. gosh bro it doesn't sound like much it doesn't look like much but jesus christ dude that was insane speeds that you're doing like right off the bat it doesn't quite translate to you in the cabin because well it's still a freaking luxury car you know it is based off the uh, five series you know mid-sized luxury car and uh, this is proving to be a very nice comfy luxury car as well It'll definitely get away from you. You know, you can be doing 10, 15 miles per hour over the speed limit and not even know about it. So that's pretty great. It doesn't have double pane glass or anything like that. There's a little bit of wind noise here. Nothing absolutely unacceptable, I guess. Well, I, I suppose it could be unacceptable for a near $109,000 starting price vehicle. But uh, I don't know what this vehicle is priced at right now because uh, Carry Imports let me drive it before they even put it up on sale. So there is that. These brakes, you have to get in on them. And I love that. It's such a natural, progressive brake pedal. Kind of went away from like that pivoting uh strut based suspension at the previous generation six series had this now utilized a more traditional double wishbone suspension setup and hey man this color definitely pops a lot of people taking notice the uh, good old m6 doesn't matter if it's seven eight years old i mean this thing still demands attention till this day so that's awesome it's, it makes like a weird kind of spaceshipy noise actually it's um it kind of reminds me of the Audi S7 I recently drove it didn't make much noise but it was still a V8 twin turbo and man it was it was brisk, that's for sure. I'll change it over to the uh, M2 mode in a bit. But it's such a civilized car to drive every day. That's the thing about these vehicles. They give you more than enough sport for the road. They're not race cars per se. They're luxury cars with big old, you know, V8 twin turbo engines in it. it makes gobs and gobs of power. You know, you have enough passing power at any given moment. I will say this seven speed dual clutch 
It's not as smooth as a torque converter at slower speeds. However, um, there's no doubt that it reacts extremely well. All right, kind of uh, get out of that. We'll test out more of that later on in the, in the review, but this is soaking up bumps extremely well. You know, the steering is actually extremely natural. It's an electronic uh, power-assisted steering rack. However, it does feel very good, very natural, good weight to it, at least in the normal mode anyway. It's about 265 wide tires up front, about 295s in the rear. So that's another thing I like, you know, these German cars, they have enough mechanical grip that they don't have to over-tire the vehicles. So they always have, you know, slightly skinnier tires and that helps reduce the, uh, the tire noise, which is great. There's no need to like over-tire these things if you have good grip and it weighs about 4,300 pounds. So it's about the same as my LC500. Um, I'll make a few little comparisons with my LC500 here in a bit. This obviously, you know, it might be a V8, but it does not sound like a V8. You know, it's very quiet, this car. And yeah, you know, over some of these roads, I am detecting a lot more road noise now. So there is that. I mean, they are summer tires put on these vehicles. So they just naturally produce more noise than like an all season does. But yeah, it's definitely not as refined as a vehicle like this probably should be. Not even as refined as my LC500 is. It's just got weight noise. It's producing some tire noise now over these rougher pavements. But the ride quality is still very good, and I appreciate that. Here, I'll switch it over to the uh, M2 mode now. Put everything in the Sport Plus, the uh, shocks in the uh, Support Plus, and the steering in Sport Plus. And I can already feel, damn, dude, that, uh, what do you call it, the heads-up display? It's huge. Wow, that's... um. When you put it in the uh, Sport Plus mode, when you put everything in Sport Plus, it to totally changes the heads-up display. There's no physical button to turn that off, I don't see. So, yeah, as a whole, yeah, it's a very satisfactory vehicle, very prestigious automobile, you know, big old BMW, you know, M6. Jesus Christ, man, it's so instantaneous, that power now. Yeah, I definitely like the comfort mode a lot more. Wait for this jerk off. To oh, of course, he's going this way. Jesus Christ, man, this is just overly aggressive. You need to get on the paddles for this one. Unless you downshift into first. Wow, it will actually let you uh, bounce off the, uh, the rev limiter there, which is awesome. And it, it really revs up quickly, dude. Wow, that's pretty insane. It's still riding good, even with the, uh, the shocks in the Sport Plus modes. You can actually change the, uh, how the transmission will react. You can make it <laughs> react a lot faster if you wanted it to. Man, this thing is naughty, dude. When you, man, it's got such a versatile personality to it. Very bipolar. Let's let all these idiots. Let's see how this thing grips grips perfectly of course it's not super tail happy or anything like that launch it right here wow dude this thing will absolutely light up the rear end this definitely got sideways on me man this wow that's a lot of power being sent to the rear wheels even my camera's getting all knocked all over the place I apologize for that yeah, dude, this is just such a nutty and crazy car, man. Oh, wow. I can't believe this car, man. Yeah, this is way too much, but it's like, it's very violent. You have to kind of drive this around in the normal mode, I feel like, for it to be practical out of the street, because this thing, when you put everything in Sport Plus, it just lights up the rear tires. You really got to be paying attention, that's for sure. In the normal mode, the traction control light is just always coming on and just cutting in the in, in the power because or else you'll just uh, slide off the road and just you know kill yourself. So this is a lot of power, man. It's very unnecessary for the road. I think if you put in the normal mode and you drive around, it's a lot more doable, I guess. Man, this thing is a hoot to drive. It's a lot of fun. I'll give it that. It's also got a different set of tires in the front and the rear. It's like Pirelli's up front and like, you know, Toyo's in the back. So there's that, but you know, what are you gonna do about it? Yeah, but this is this can definitely be fun. This is, uh, it's been a while since I've driven a car this powerful to the point where it just like lights up the rear tires and even going straight, it's just spinning its wheels and you know what I'm saying, not putting its power down. That's, uh, that's a lot of fun. That's a different sensation. It always kind of keeps you on your toes. Oh, that lady liked my car. There it is. 
she was looking at it, she was smiling, so there's that. I guess that's why you buy this car, right? That's the most important thing. I mean, you can just treat this like a cruiser and just, you know, drive this car casually, but, and enjoy all the uh, positive attention you're gonna be getting. Sorry that my camera keeps uh, going down. This car is just too much to handle, I suppose. Okay, uh, concluding the driving segment. Okay, uh, this is refined in its own weird way. I'm doing like way over the speed limit right now, and it's uh, you you wouldn't even feel it. You can be doing like a hundred miles an hour in this thing and not even know it. So it's one of those types of cars. However, there is road noise, there is tire noise, all that good stuff. But this car is very nutty. It's got great performance. It's overkill for the road, of course. I think a 650i of the same uh, generation will be more than enough, but. You want that M6? You want that prestige of owning an M6? Well, there you go. You can keep tuning this car. You can get all kinds of dine-in, dean-in, whatever it's called, performance upgrades, and really take it to the moon if you wanted to. I am noticing a few little clunky noises. I think it's coming from the transmission. I'm not entirely sure, but, uh, <laughs> you know, like I mentioned, please do not buy this car without getting a warranty, please. That's my number one thing I can tell you if you like this car that much. And it gets about 14 city, 20 highway, a lot better fuel economy than the previous generation. So there's that. Now let's talk about this interior because I love the exterior color, but I also like this brown tan interior going on in here. It's very nice. And this interior cabin is very solid. It has aged extremely well. I still don't know how to put this car into park though. That's insane. Uh, there is no park, I guess. I think you just put the uh, parking brake up, I suppose. I guess that's how you put it into park, but whatever. Yeah, these seats are very comfortable. A lot of adjustability in these seats. You can be extremely tall. I have to actually put the seat up in this thing. This seat can go down a lot more. So there is that, and there is no sunroof. It's got a carbon fiber roof up there. So helps with the rigidity and it looks cool. But yeah, that's great that you can be very tall, put the seat all the way back and all that good stuff. You have plenty of room in here. So that's good. That's another great thing about this versus like, you know, M3s and M2s and stuff like that. Plus I'd rather have the comfort that this car has to offer. This Bang & Olufsen sound system, this optional sound system sounds fantastic, man. The bass hits hard. It's very good. I mean, it's a very clear audio system. It's not super bass heavy, but it's got an appropriate amount. It's a great audio system. Love that. It's not that Harman Kardon crap going on here. So that's very good. Got all the uh, metal speaker grills and all that stuff. This is a very nicely spec vehicle. I'm sure this is over 150 grand when it was new uh, with this interior, this two-tone thing with the black. Uh, leather up front here and it's got it's a very plush interior space a lot of nice you know soft touch materials good leather qualities and all that stuff going on it's no it's not really anything i complain about and it's very solid held up extremely well there's no creaks and rattles really going on here bmw really nailed it with the quality of these vehicles so i appreciate that it's got plenty of safety features i turned all that off because it can get very annoying but uh yeah it's got all the lane key forward collision assist all that stuff and i think it even has like a night mode yeah, night vision, it's got that. Yeah, this has all of it, dude. And it's got automatic headlights. You know, it's a lot of technology in here. It's another reason why I suggest you getting the uh, the warranties and all that. It's got heated and cooled seats, so there's that. It's kind of got the old school iDrive, but it's very easy to get used to, so I don't really have any complaints with that. However, I will say that uh, it, it doesn't have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. It's like 2013, so you can't really expect that out of this vehicle. But the entire climate control totally separated from the screen. I love that. This isn't the most unbelievable interior space. It's very much similar to like a three series interior, except uh, the nicer materials, you know, with the leathers and all that stuff. It's aged extremely well. It's a nice timeless interior. I will give it that. It's got the big old infotainment screen, of course, much larger than what you get in a three series, but it's the exact same layout. Um, as one of those vehicles. The gauge cluster looks very clean in here with a little bit of that um, helper screen. It's like all at the bottom there, shows you some great information, pretty easy to access. Steering wheel controls here. It's a nice steering wheel, of course, M steering wheel with the colorful stitching, all that good stuff. The craftsmanship in here is pretty good, although it doesn't look unbelievable in camera. It's not like the Mercedes interior or like the Lexus interiors, but you know, it's nice, pragmatic, good layout, good ergonomics. I appreciate that the paddles are great they feel nice in your hands it's kind of got the douchey turn signals i don't like that but you do have automatic windshield wipers which is also great push button start of course with the uh auto stop start you can defeat that of course two big cup holders you have uh ashtray in the middle because you know you're gonna be a pimp in here the center armrest uh you got some storage in there nothing unbelievable going on but uh nice padded interior space i don't really like the piano black plastic but um even with eighty five thousand miles you know it's Kind of got some wear on it, but it's not terrible, I guess. Kind of wish it was carbon fiber. You know, usually these M cars come with a uh, carbon fiber, but glove box has some space in there. I actually did test out the rear seats. I actually do fit back there. 
but there's not an enormous amount of space. It's a big coupe. There's not a super large amount of space back there, but I can fit. There's a good headroom back there, uh, but the legroom is definitely not that great. It's about the same as like a Mustang GT, like a new one. I can do about 10, 15 minutes back there. That's about it, but I'm five foot 11. I am literally the cutoff point to sit back there, so there is that. The trunk, however, massive. Love how big the, uh, the trunk is, dude. Can't fold down the seats or anything like that, and there's no space underneath the trunk, but it is a huge trunk. Golf clubs easily fit back there, so I love that for a coupe. So in conclusions, has my uh, dream car, has it lived up to my expectations? Honestly, I like the LC500 a lot more, if I'm gonna be honest, it's a lot smoother. This car, these M cars, I drove the M3 as well. They don't have like, um, they're not as smooth, I guess. Easily the S550 I drove here, which I think they still have that. S550 coupe, check that out. That was definitely superior to this. I feel like you can't even hear the engine in this thing. So I like the way that felt a lot more. I like the Benz, I like my LC500 a lot more than this, but this is a cool car, it's a nutty car, it's so fast, it lights up the rear. It's so fast that you can't even put the power down, basically, that's why they had to go to an all-wheel drive setup for the new cars, because or else there's no way you can utilize all this. But you got 200 on dash, it's very prestigious, it looks awesome. It's more that driver focused, like enthusiast, big coupe, if you will, so I like the formula for this, and uh, I think it's an awesome car. I think you could have a lot of fun with it on the road, and I think if you got this thing with the warranty, it's pretty awesome, but it's definitely not like my most favorite car I've ever driven or anything like that, uh, but it's a very cool one, and I'm glad I got the chance to drive it. It's very awesome, very nutty. It's like Germany's Hellcat, basically, right? Something like something along those lines, so enjoy it. If you're an owner out there, let me know how the M5, M6 of this generation has treated you. This has 85,000 miles, and it's aged very well. But again, get it with the warranty. So all the carry imports information will be down in the description box below. Thank you again for watching. Take care and goodbye.